So Brain Rec Tech here, and I'd like to talk to you today about an option you may not have known existed for sharing a RAID array between Windows and Linux. Up until recently, you only had about three options. Uh, the first one is you rely on fake RAID, which is, comes up with your motherboard, or you buy a PCI add-in card. Um, like I said, that's fake RAID. It's not real hardware RAID. You're not getting real hardware RAID until you're spending about $300 on an add-in card. Uh, the second option is to build a server, build the RAID array on that, and then share it across the network. So you don't have to worry about the local computer and the differences between Windows and Linux and how they handle doing RAID arrays. Uh, the last option would be to go into Linux, build your RAID array in that, and then boot back into Windows and build up a Linux VM so that the VM would access the Linux RAID and share it to Windows. Um, if you know how to do that, then you know that that's not <laughs> really an optimal solution. I mean, you can just if you have the option to build the server, just do that. Um, recently, in my experience, I was going to take my three 500 gigabyte hard drives and I was going to attempt to build a RAID array using the motherboard chipset and share that between, see if I can get that to be shared between Lin Windows and Linux. Uh, this led me to waste six hours of my time that I will never get back. Um, Linux could see the array. DM RAID was working in that respect, but it could never activate it for reasons I don't know. Uh, didn't matter too much anyway, because on the Windows side of things, I could not get all the drivers I needed preloaded so that when I shut down Windows, went into the BIOS, changed my settings, and then booted back up, I wouldn't get a blue screen because Windows didn't have the drivers. Well, how can I get the drivers in there if you won't let me load them up before I turn the damn computer off? Go Microsoft. So that was pretty much out of the window. I did a little bit more research and then I found out that we now have LDM tool in Linux to access Microsoft Dynamic Disks inside Linux. Um, before you go running off on this idea though, I will have to tell you that there are a few limitations. Uh, first of all is that LDM can only use query C, you know, that kind of thing in Linux. Uh, you have to create the dynamic disks inside Windows, and if you want to change anything around, you have to do that inside Windows. Uh, support for dynamic disks isn't so straightforward because Microsoft. Uh, if you have Windows 2000 Professional, what the hell are you doing? Upgrade already, but you would have some full support for Microsoft dynamic disks. Uh, Windows XP, again, what the hell are you doing? upgrade already but you on locally you don't have access to dynamic disks at all windows xp pro could manage them on a server but couldn't use them locally uh, when you get to windows vista business and ultimate users have full support and then everybody else is left out in the cold um, windows 7 finally finally Windows 7 home users have access to span volumes and striped volumes uh, ultimate users and business users I'm guessing have full support again. Professional is up in the air. I really couldn't find any in, I couldn't find any official information. And there was maybe a couple people that said yes, professional had full support. So take that for what you will. Can't find out for sure. Um, one last thing before I go on, I, I want to note is that I noticed that my partitions were not aligned when I went into Linux and saw what was going on. Uh, I thought since Windows Vista Service Pack 2, that Windows, whenever it created a partition table, would do one meg alignment by default from now on. Guess that's not the case. So if your hard drive doesn't report to the operating system that it uses 4K or one meg alignment, uh, you might be out, out of luck because, you know, at least when you're dealing with the partition tables yourself, you can force that alignment that you want. With dynamic disks, I don't think there's any way to do it yourself. You have to go through Windows to do it, and Windows doesn't give you the tools to get that fine grain control that you need. So, with all that being said, let's go into Windows and see how this gets set up. So, let's see. Yep, there I am. You can see right here, I'm in the uh, virtual disk manager here, and I have this last partition that I'm going to set up for my virtual machines that I use. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click... Right click and then go to right to volume. Wizard pops up and the first disk selected, you know, that's the one I clicked on. And I want to go over here, click on that, and add them both into the array. I'm going to leave it at the default low, uh, drive letter assignment. And when I go to format this, I'm going to leave everything at the default. I'm going to name this virtual machines. I want to do a quick format and click next. And it's going to tell me that I have, you know, there's my volume size and 
Uh, looks everything looks good, so we're gonna click on finish, and hopefully now, unlike last time, you know, Windows crashed when I did this the last time, and this time it didn't crash. So, yeah, there I go. So, there you go. We have it all set up. Then let's go into Linux and see how this works. All right, now that we are back inside Linux, we can see how we can use LDM tool to access our dynamic disk volumes inside of Linux. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to want to create a script that's going to create these virtual devices every time you log in automatically. Uh, the command is LDM tool create all. Once you issue that command, if you look inside the dev directory, you're gonna see the DM dash, whatever devices, you know, one for every dynamic volume that LDM tool can find, and once you, mount those virtual devices into your Linux file system, Bob's your uncle, there you go. You you should be able to take it from there. It's familiar territory. Um, if you're curious as to the performance that you can get out of this, if I bring up the disk utility program here and check out one of the benchmarks that I previously ran, we can see that I get about 300 megabytes per second from the beginning of this vo virtual volume. That is pretty impressive. Um, for $150 between three disks, and the only reason I spent $50 a disk is because this was back in the uh, days of the hard drive crash when there was that flood in Asia. So unless you're, spe you're spending uh, a lot of money on an SSD, you're probably not going to see that kind of performance. So whoever created LDM tool, thank you very much. There's now a solution that users have to access a RAID array between Windows and Linux. If only Microsoft wasn't involved. Thank you.